Okay, um, chapter three, part three, graphical addition of vectors. So vectors um, at head to tail. And uh, so suppose that we want to add the following two vectors. So I have two vectors here, vector number one being along x direction. And vector number two being uh, not along y, but you know, in this configuration, somewhere like 45 degrees above the x. Okay, so I have whatever I have x uh, number uh, vector number one here. I have vector vector number two here. Okay. Now, um, if I want to add them, there are two ways to do that. Okay. So the first way is which I prefer that way but uh, it's up to you so the first way is to draw both vectors from the same point okay they are both uh, now starting from the same point okay so they have the same starting point so same start point Okay. Now, the first thing you need to do is to, um, let's see, you need to draw a parallel line. Let's see if I can do that. From the end of first ve vector, parallel to the second one. So kind of like that. Let me see if I can do a better job this time. Uh, coming here, choosing that, line style. Okay, let's try that. There we go. So I'm trying to make a parallel line from the end of vector one parallel to vector two. Kind of like that. And I'll do the same thing from the end of vector to parallel to vector one. Okay, so you do uh, make a shape like this. Now, then at that point, this guy will be your A plus B, A vector plus B vector, or one plus two in this case. So vector number one plus vector number two. Okay, so this would be your uh, A plus two vector that's how it looks okay on a side note you don't know how to deal with it right now but on a side note um, this will be so kind of like this from this point all the way to this point There we go. That will be your one minus two. You'll see what how we end up to that, but just have that in, in mind to, to, to memorize kind of this figure. Uh, you draw a parallel line from one end of one parallel to two, and you do the same thing from end of two to one, and then this will be your a plus two, uh, sorry, one plus two, or a plus b, or whatever the, you call your vectors. And this will be one minus two, or a minus b, kind of like that, okay? So uh, any vector can be moved uh, as long as it remains parallel to its original direction. And any vector, can be moved as long as its length, as long as its length 
was not changed. So and we are in a second. So that was the first one. That was the first method. So this is the first method. Okay. The second method is this. That's the second method. Okay. But before I'm going to second method, we have to know these two uh, facts. Any vector can be moved as long as it remains parallel to its original direction. And any vector can be moved as long as its length does not change. So, for example, if I have this vector, so call it just vector A, okay, I can move it. I can get this and move it. As long as you are not changing its direction, as long as you're not rotating it, as long as you are not doubling it or making it smaller, as long as you keep everything is the same, you can move it around. Okay, and it will be the same vector. Okay, so just have that in mind. As long as you have this uh, two rules, then you can easily uh, move vectors. So these two rules are very important. Okay, so um, second method is to move one of these vectors, okay, to move one of these vectors, for example, vector one here, okay, to move it from this location all the way up there, okay? In other words, drawing vector one so that it starts from the end of vector two, okay? So I'll draw it like that. I have vector two, number two, and I want to draw vector number one from the end of two. So this would be number one. I draw it from the end of vector two. I didn't change anything. I didn't change its magnitude. I didn't change its direction. All I did is I just moved it around. I moved it from this, this part, which was the bottom, all the way to top, parallel. I didn't change its direction. I didn't change anything. I just moved it up, okay? Now, draw a line from the tail of vector two to the head of vector one, okay? So that will be your result. So I, you move the vector from this part all the way parallel without changing its magnitude all the way to top. And then you draw a line from the tail of vector two to the head of vector one. Okay, so this would be your vector two plus vector one. That would be your result. And if you're looking at this, this is the exact same as this one, right? As this guy. This, it is the same thing. It looks the same. It functions the same. And it's the same uh, addition, right? So it's up to you to choose the first method or choose the second method. Technically, um, drawing the vectors as they are following one another and then draw a line from the tail of vector two all the way to the head of vector one. And that's, this would be your result. So mathematical addition of vectors. Now we talked about how to draw them, but how do we mathematically add them up? If the vectors are uh, you know, forming a right angle when, when you put them all together, okay, you have vector A, you have vector B. When you when you draw them in a way to follow one another, so that the head of the uh, one is the tail of the other, they are following one another, just like what we had here. They are following one another, right? So when you do that, if they end up making a right angle, ninety degrees, 
And then essentially, this is just a triangle that we just talked about in, in part two. So vector is a right angle. Use the, uh, you know, the, the, the theorem that we know, the, the Pythagorean theorem that we know, right? Remember what it was saying? A is squared plus B is squared is R squared. So if I want to find the magnitude of um, R, the magnitude of R, I should just say A is squared plus B is squared, right? So um, if you add them up, the, the result is a vector with the magnitude of square root of a squared plus b squared. So if, if they add up to be a right triangle, a triangle with um, a, an angle of 90 degrees, kind of like this configuration that you see on your screen, then that means that you can easily find the result or r. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So I have two vectors, vector A, which is now six meters, vector B, which is now two meters. And uh, so these two blue lines are two vectors. One is length is six meters, the other one length is two meters. And um, I am using the second method to, to, to find their, uh, you know, their product or you know, kind of their, when, when I add them up. So this would be a vector R, okay, when you add them up. And you add, add these two vectors. Now, the, the, the first method was saying that draw them from the same point. The first method, if you remember, the first method was saying draw them from, first, start from the same point and draw them. The second method was saying, draw them in the way that they are following one another. Okay, so the head of one is the tail of the other. Okay, and then draw a line from the tail of vector two to the head of vector one. Okay, so we do the same thing here. We do this the second method here. The head of vector six meters is the tail of the vector with, with two meters length. Okay, so now that is my R, but I know this, if I do that, I have a right, a right angle here of 90 degrees. Okay, so that means I can easily find R because I have a triangle here with 90 degrees angle. So that means that I can say R squared is two squared plus six squared, or just R or the magnitude is the square root of two to the power of two plus six to the power of two, which is equals to 6.32 meters. So I could find R um, this way, super easy. Now, if I want to find this angle, to see what this angle is, a lot of times we are dealing with these directions. Um, or simply the question might ask, uh, what is there, uh, if, you add, if you add these two vectors, what will be the direction of uh, their addition, okay? What would be the direction, what is the direction of R? Okay, so now you're dealing with theta, so you have to find theta, all right? At that point, you can just use uh, tan negative one Okay, or reverse tan. So meaning that a tangent is two over six. Remember, the two is the opposite over adjacent. So two over six, two over six. But then you can use the reverse because you know that how much the, uh, the tangent is. Now you can find the theta associated with it. And if you put this in your calculator, you'll find that it is 18.4 uh, degrees above. So this is 18.4 above the X or above the zero level. 
So let's take a look at this problem. A certain vector has x and y component that are equal in magnitude. So the magnitudes are the same. So x and y components are the same. Which of the following is a possible angle for this vector in the standard xy coordinate system? So let's draw a standard xy coordinate system first. So what I have is a uh, standard xy coordinate system. I like that. All right. So I have x and I have y. Okay. And uh, I have a vector, which I call it vector a. And it has a x component and y component uh, that are equal. So if I project this a of x is its projection along x or its x component. And I have, if I project that to y, I have a sub y. And by the way, these two are still vectors, so I have a little air on top, okay? And the problem is telling us that a sub x and a sub y, they are the same magnitude. They have the same length along x and along y. Their directions are different, obviously. One is along x, one is along y, but um, their magnitudes are the same, okay? So if you're looking at this, this is the x, all right, and a of x, and this is a of y. And this is your 90 degrees angle. And this is the data, okay? Because the question is asking, which of the following is a possible angle for this vector in a standard xy coordinate system? Okay, so, um, what is the tan of theta? Okay, h of o, h of a, which is in this case f uh, a of y over a of x, right? So tan of theta is. And we know that they are equal, right? We know that a of y and a of x, they are equal in size because it's given to us from the problem. So tan of theta is one. Now, if you, if you already know which um, angle will give you a tan of one, then go ahead and uh, you know use it. Otherwise, theta will be tan negative one of one, which is, 45 degrees. So that's your um, answer right there. So if we have, uh, if you're adding vectors, but we do not have a right angle here. Okay, so graphically, um, we should be able to draw uh, vectors. So if vector A has a magnitude half of B draw a B twice as long as A. Okay, so try to keep keep them as uh, you know as to the scale as you can. When you're if if vector one is two, and vector uh, vector A is two, for example, and um, vector B is ten. So uh, you know vector B is ten. You know five times greater. Uh, so you have to be careful when you're drawing them and measure the length of a result. Okay, when you're adding them up. But um, uh, on a side note, if what if you, you had like three vectors? So what if you had vector A and then vector B, vector C, and so on. You can draw more. 
what if you want to find uh, you know uh, the, the addition for those if you want to draw a vector for that so uh, the second method is telling us you can draw them uh, in the way uh, that um, the tail of one is the head of the other so kind of they're following one another kind of like that and you start from tail of uh, this one all the way to the head of the last one. So this will be your A plus B plus C. Okay. So if I give you three vectors or four vectors or 10 vectors, you can draw them without changing their direction, without changing their magnitude. You can draw them in the way that they are following one another. And if you want to see what the, if you add them up, you want to see what the result is, you can start from the tail of one of them and draw a line All right, what did I do? Okay. So this would be your A plus B plus C. So from the head of one to the, from the tail of one to the head of the other. So this will be your result. Again, if I give you 10 vectors, you'll do the same. You, you draw them in a way that they are following one another. And then you just, let's, let's see something like that, for example. If you had vector one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then if you want to add them up, you just draw a line from the tail of the first one all the way to the head of the other. And you say, okay, this is A plus B plus C plus so on. Okay. Now, Mathematically, if you had two vectors, if you had two vectors mathematically, so I am going to put a star here and say that it is important, or double star maybe, okay? So if I had two vectors, vector A, and vector B, All right, that are making a angle of theta. So vector A is that, and vector B is that. And I want to see if I add them up, what would I get? I can draw it, like I can draw it easily. I can say, using the first method, I can say, the result of adding them up will be a vector. A plus B will be a vector looking like that, right? I use the first method. I like the first method more, okay? So now the question is what, if they were a right angle, you were using Pythagorean uh, method, right? Theory. If, If theta was 90 degrees, then your A plus B or this side was A squared plus B squared, just like the way you use from uh, a Pythagorean uh, method, right? But what if it's not? What if it is not 90 degrees. So if theta is not 90, then A plus B is a squared 
plus b squared, kind of like the same that you had here before, plus two times a times b times cosine of theta. So in other words, this is the, the actual theory. This is the actual Pythagorean theory. This is the actual formula that we had. But in the case that you are dealing with an angle of 90 degrees, the cosine of 90 is zero. So this term will go away because the cosine of 90 is zero. And you are de only dealing with a squared plus b squared as you have it here. But what if the angle is not 90? Then you are having an, another term here, 2ab cosine theta, okay? And uh, giving you a little bit of a help if you are, if you want to find the magnitude of their subtraction and not the addition, so a minus b, then all you do is you put a negative here, okay? So let me actually write it in the blue color because that would make more sense. So a plus b or a minus b, then you would have a squared plus b squared plus or minus 2ab cosine theta, okay? So graphical subtraction of vectors, same as addition, except the vector points in the opposite direction. So in other words, if, if you want to have um, a plus b, if you have a plus b, if you want to find a minus b, okay, this is the exact same thing. The only difference is that you are doing this, a plus minus b, okay? They are the same. So I'm subtracting them, but it's like I'm adding, adding them up, but considering b to be a negative vector, okay? What is a negative vector? It's the same vector in the opposite direction. So if, if for example, b is this, then this would be negative b. The opposite direction. Same size, same magnitude, that's just the opposite direction. Okay, so if I have A here, and if I have B here, and you're following one another, in the second method, remember the second method. So A, B, you're following one another. So this C or A plus B is looking like that. And this is how we add them up. Okay, now if I want to find a minus b, I'm basically adding them up, but I am adding a with negative b this time. Okay, I'm adding a with negative b. So take a look at this. So I have a here and I have B here, and they are following one another. So if I want to add them up, I use the second method, A, B. So this would be your A plus B, okay? But over here, if you want to find A minus B, you have A, you see this is the same A. This is, if this is A, this is the same A. But B and negative B are in the opposite direction. So A minus B would be just A minus B would be just A plus negative B. Okay, A plus negative B. You know what the negative B look like. That's B, that's vector B, and that's vector negative b, same size, different uh, direction, same size, opposite direction. So you can add a and negative b, okay? And 
getting this, which is a plus negative b or a minus b just, right? So um, subtraction is still the same as addition, yeah, but you have to be careful because negative b is right there, but you add them up, you still add them up, okay? In fact, in mathematics, there is, um, we don't have a, a subtraction. It's always addition in mathematics. The subtraction in uh, mathematics does not exist. Yeah, it doesn't exist. It might shock you, but that's the, the, but that's the truth. So in other words, 10 minus five does not exist. It is in fact 10 plus negative five, which will just give you five. So you're adding, adding them up, but you're adding one of them as a negative number. Okay, this is the last part of um, chapter three, relative velocity. Um, and uh, so the velocity of a body seen by observers called a, rel a velocity relative to that observer or simply to, uh, you know, relative velocity, that's what we call it. In other words, for example, if I am driving um, a car and uh, you're driving a car as well, I have a, a speed or a velocity relative to you. I have a, a speed or a velocity relative to people standing in the bus station. I have a velocity relative to people in an airplane. I have a velocity relative to, you know, um, for example, a train passing by. So a relative velocity is just relative to observer. A frame of reference is a coordinate system plus a time scale, okay? And some, um, for example, some airports have moving walkways uh, designed to help passengers uh, reach the other end, you know, quicker and do the other end quicker. So um, to an observer who is stationary, how does the velocity of someone walking in a walkway compare to someone who is just walking in the same speed, but not in the walkway, okay? So uh, you get the idea what I'm talking about. The velocity is relative, okay? Usually when we, when we talk about the velocity, we're talking about velocity relative to a, a stationary, uh, coordinate system. When we say uh, a car was moving with five miles per hour or 60 kilometers per hour, or a box was moving with 20 meters per second velocity, we're, we are uh, making this comparison compared to or relative to a stationary observer. Okay. But if the observer is moving itself, then we are dealing with uh, relative velocity. Okay, let's take a look. So, and they are all vectors. We know the velocity is a vector. Okay, so we're dealing with vector here. So I have a ground-based observer here, and there is this guy in the train who is going to use the bathroom, for example, or whatever, and it is moving, uh, he is moving, two meters per second with respect to the train. So the velocity of the person with respect to the train, so person with respect to train, V of person, of that guy with respect to train, V P T. And it's a vector because it also needs some sort of a direction. So, um, he is moving with two meters per second with respect to the train, but the train itself, but the train itself is moving with nine meters per second. So the train, the velocity of the train with respect to ground is nine meters per second. Okay. And uh, if you, if you add them up, you will get the velocity of the person with respect to ground. Because they're both moving in the same direction. The train is moving to the right, the guy is also moving to the right. So with respect to the ground, 
the guy is moving faster. It's moving faster than two meters per second. It's moving faster than nine meters per second. In fact, its velocity is when you add them up. Okay, let me give you another example, maybe a more tangible example. So I have a, an airplane. All right. And there's this guy. The one the end of the uh, airplane. And the airplane is moving with a higher speed, like with a very, so the velocity of the airplane with respect to ground is, let's say, 500 kilometers per hour, okay? And the guy is going to the bathroom, for example, or just walking to you know, talk to somebody. And uh, the velocity of this guy, so the velocity of this person with respect to plane is one meter per second, okay? Now, if this guy is moving from one end to the other, then with respect to the person on the ground, the velocity of the person with respect to the ground is not only the velocity of the plane, but also his own velocity as well. Okay, so V of the airplane with respect to the ground plus V of the person with respect to the airplane. Okay, now they are all vectors. Take a look. So uh, take a look back to the train. Velocity of the person with respect to train plus a velocity of the train with respect to the ground. So nine and two, if you add them up, they are in the same direction. If you add them up, you will get 11, 11 meters per second. So that's the idea of relative velocity here. So the, uh, the subscripts are ordered in the particular way. First subscript refer to the object that is being measured. Second, subscript refer to the object relative to which the first is measured. Okay, so now the relative velocity is the velocity of one object to the other. So as I said, we know that, but we have to use a, some sort of a correct notation so that we understand what we're talking about. So in order to understand, we have to use these two, uh, kind of like that. So um, remember, when we are dealing with direction, you're dealing with direction. It is important to say if it's a positive direction or if it's a negative direction. So positive and negative directions are important here. Okay, it's important to know this. For example, let me give you another example of what I mean. So here I have a, uh, a box. All right, and I have another box here as well. And on top of the box, there's this little kid hanging out, okay? And on top of this box, there is the second kid hanging out. So box one and box two, okay? So box one is moving to the right with a velocity of box one to the ground is 10 meters per second. Box two is moving to the left with velocity of box two with respect to the ground of three meters per second, okay? What is the velocity of one with respect to two? What is the velocity of one with respect to two? So we know that this is a vector for sure, okay? The velocity of one with respect to two is just 
the velocity of one with respect to ground plus if you go back here of velocity you, you, you get the uh, the formula so or you get these two here doesn't matter whichever whichever way that you want to memorize it velocity of one with respect to ground plus the velocity of ground with respect to two in other words the way i memorize it is this so th this is one and this is two velocity of one with respect to two okay and there they are one two in between you have the ground okay so that's the way you can memorize that as well so let's take a look velocity of velocity of one with respect to two is velocity of one with respect to ground which is 10 meters per second plus velocity of the ground with respect to two velocity of the ground with respect to two okay ground with respect to two what is it exactly three so that means three meters per second so that means it is 13 meters per second okay Super, super easy. When you have two objects going in the opposite direction, when you have two objects going in the opposite direction, it's like, let's say two cars, for example, one is driving to the right 60 miles per hour. The other one is driving to the left 60 miles per hour. When you're looking at them, you're getting close to one another with 120 miles per hour right one to the left one to the right it is the same as if you're thinking of it as one of them is a stationary one of them is staying still but the other one is 120 kilometers moving with 120 kilometers 120 miles per hour okay so one is um 10 the other one is three they are getting um close to one another, one to the right, one to the left, okay? And now at this point, they'll meet, right? They'll get uh, to this point, they're getting close, but with a speed of 13 meters per second. Okay. So, so suppose you are traveling at the speed of 10, Let's look at another example. Uh, suppose you're traveling with a speed of 10 meters per second towards a car on your bicycle. The car is moving at 15 meters per second. What is your relative velocity if you are moving towards one another and if you are both moving in the same direction? So in other words, if the bicycle bicycle is moving with a 10 meters per second first is and they are moving all in the same direction so that's the bicycle that's the car that's the first case scenario second case is that bicycle is moving towards right, 
car is moving to the left. Okay, and if that's the case, then if you're both moving in the same direction relative to one another, you're moving slower because um, the velocity of bicycle with respect to car is just 15 minus 10, which is five meters per second. And the velocity here of bicycle with respect to car is that you have to add them up, right? So 10 meters per second plus 15 meters per second would be 25 meters per second. Okay, so example uh, number four, crossing a river. Um, so the engine of a boat drives it across the river that is 180, 1,800 meters or 1,800 meters wide. And the velocity of the boat relative to the water is four meters per second. So one more time, the velocity of the boat relative to the water is four meters per second, directly perpendicular to the current. The velocity of the water relative to the shore is two meters per second. Okay, what is the velocity of the boat relative to the shore? So let's let's take a look at this example. I have a boat that has a velocity of four meters per second directly perpendicular to the current. So let's say that this is the current, okay? And that's the boat and the velocity is four meters per second directed perpendicular to the current. The velocity of the water relative to the shore is two meters per second. So two meters per second for the water relative to the shore. Now the question is, what is the velocity of the boat relative to the shore? So not only the boat is moving up, but it's also moving to the left because of the water speed. So that means the boat is moving in that direction. Okay. Now here is the here is the time to remember the triangle. Which one is the right angle? It's right there, 90 degrees. And you have a triangle here. A triangle, one side is two, one side is four. You're looking for this, and that's your triangle with an angle of 90 degrees right there. Okay, so we're looking to see what this, is, what this one is. All right, so the result is, remember the Pythagorean um, formula? Two to the power of two plus four to the power of two. So two to the power of two is four. Okay, four to the power of two is 16. So this means it's, let's go with a 20. Uh, and you can just put this in the calculator to find the final answer. Okay, so it's another very simple example, but very important. So just have that in mind. This four meters per second is relative to, to the water. And then you have uh, a two meters per second perpendicular two meters per second of water with respect to the shore or to the ground, okay? And if you want to find the velocity of the boat, you have to, be, not only it moves up, but it also moves left, right? So you have to, you have to find the uh, magnitude of this vector. And that is just square root of 20 here. Okay, 
Um, here is a, another example, the pilot of a light airplane with their airspeed of 200 kilometers per hour wants to fly due west, okay? There is a strong wind of 120 kilometers per hour blowing from north, All right? If the, if the pilot points the nose of the airplane north of west, so, the, so her ground track is due west, what will be her ground speed? <clears throat> Let's take a look. The pilot of the light airplane with the air speed of 200 kilometers per hour, so the air speed is 200 kilometers per hour, so velocity of air. Airspeed. And it wants to fly west. So the result is to the west. No matter what's happening up there, us from the ground see the airplane going to the west. There is a strong wind, 120 kilometers, blowing uh, from the north. So from the north, we have a strong wind with 120 kilometers per hour from north to south, right? And um, if the pilot points the nose of the airplane north of the west, so that's north of the west, north of west, okay. And, um, The question is, so that her ground track is due west, what will be her ground speed? All right, so what we have is this. And this is the exact same triangle with an angle of 90 degrees here, isn't it? Yeah, 90 degrees right there. Okay, so you have a triangle this time. And this is your angle of 90. This is the wind that's coming from north to south, right? With 120, magnitude of 120 kilometers per hour, okay? And then you have a air speed of 200 kilometers per hour, right? 200 kilometers per hour and air speed because this, this is where the uh, airplane, the pilot keeps the nose of the airplane to. And this will be your path to the west, right? This is what we will see from the ground. So this is towards the west. And we're looking to find this guy magnitude. In other words, um, you have a triangle that you want to find. So remember the, the theory that we talked about? A squared plus B squared, A squared plus B squared, under the square root, right, will be your R or your final result. But in this case, you have the final result, right? In this case, or uh, you can kind of write it like this, R squared is A squared plus B squared. So in this case, you have the final result. You have two, 200 kilometers as this side, right? That's your R. So 200 kilometers to the power of two, equals this side, which we don't know, okay? Uh, plus B squared or 120 squared. Now, I generally don't use a question mark for my equations 
okay? But I just want to show how it is looking when you put everything back in your formula. But I generally never use a question mark here. So I always show it with an X or A or a B or something like that. Let's say X, for example, okay? Now, so your X will be then Two hundreds to the power of two minus hundred twenty to the power of two, and then whatever it is, that's your final answer. So this will be your speed with respect to ground. Speed with respect to ground. This will be that. Okay. This is the end of chapter uh, three. It is very important that you um, follow these. Uh, you know, on a piece of paper as I am writing them. So just don't look at the video. It's very convenient, but you have to start writing things down as, at the same time. So um, have that in mind. And um, it is almost impossible to cover everything in a video of a, an hour long video uh, that is in the chapter. So you have to watch, uh, you have to actually read the whole chapter. That's one of the requirements for this course. At the beginning of each day, I say, hey, read this chapter, read chapter three. So it's impossible to cover everything that's offered in the book. It is almost impossible to do it. Otherwise, you have to watch a six hours video for each chapter, at least six hours video. So um, go ahead and go over these um, slides one more time. I'm gonna post this slide on Canvas as well, but go ahead and uh, you know take a look at it, work on the problems a couple more times. And if you have questions, you can always email me, all right?